Rice has made a sensational start to oust the Falcons and take second place. He just rubbed his shoulders around the outside of Hell Corner. A smaller car still pouring on the track. An escort has stopped up there, and oh, there's a waggle from the Gemini that just dodges him. Capri was the car that stopped, but the car that's going is Peter Brock. He has Alan Grice behind him, then the two Falcons right on his hammer, and the field pouring up the mountain for the first time. And Grice is out for the lead. Brock's in front. But look how much ground Alan Grice has made up on him. John Harvey, another great start. He's up there in fifth place, just behind the two uh, Moffat Falcons. Grice is in sixth. A number to remember, and he's closing up all the time. This is not a 163 lap race. Grice is making a sprint of it from the start. Brock said he'd go as fast as they wanted to, and Grice has, must have heard the conversation. He's really provoking Peter Brock. We'll just wait as they come across the top of the mountain, and a tremendous cheer going up from spectators. Just look at them, so thick up in the top part as Peter Brock is now still leading from Alan Grice, then the two Ford Falcons, then followed back by Johnny Harvey. Once again, down through the dip. The two Fords very close together indeed. Then the two Marlborough, two UE Holden dealer team cars as Basil Von Ruin is now attempting to be started here in the in front of us, and he is underway. Peter Brock once again, still leading from Alan Grice. The two Fords, then the two Marlborough Holden dealer team cars. And what a race we have in this first lap of the event. It's Brock, Grice, Bond, Moffat. Then we have... Uh Harvey just leading O'Brien. That's the order as they come for the first time down Conrod Strait. Grice closing under, uh, under pace. Look at this. He has the legs on Peter Brock. Now the braking will be the fascinating part. Will Brock let him go? Will he try now break him? They are flying, but Grice is going deeper. There's no room for error here when they take this corner. Alan Grice playing what Johnny Harvey played in the recent Sandown race. That's go, and go for broke from the first lap on. Alan Grice in the Craven Mile Tirana hatchback leads from the pole sitter, Peter Brock, then further back to Colin Bond. Well, and Alan Moffat now moving up into the third. Bond drops back to fourth. The two Marlborough Holden dealer team cars followed through. Next by Kevin Butler, then the Bob Jane entry. Up over the top of the mountain, and here's Grice at speed with Alan Moffat tucked in behind him and the Ford fans on the top of the mountain are going wild. They want Moffat to pull out and pass down through this very demanding part of the circuit on the approach to the S's. And from our helicopter position, you can see the, the distance between these two cars. This is a phenomenal pace for a 1,000 kilometer race. Grice and Moffat dicing. Bond is close right up. You can see how close he is now, right on the tail, and he'll make a move to get by them both. Grice is going to have his hands full halfway down Conrod Strait because he tries to get out of the corner and then run as hard as he can. Brock taking a very wide line here. The two forwards are going for a bit of slip streaming and you'll notice both of them are about ready to attack Alan Grice here on the outside, halfway down Conrod Strait. Moffat pulls out, takes him on the outside and we'll wait and see whether Grice will try and race him into the braking area. He'll take Bond with him though, uh, Mike, and Bond is moving into second place and that'll drive the forward fans crazy with excitement. Here they come, but Grice is going to fight back on the inside of Colin Bond. Bond continues on. He's going very hard down the outside. Some team tactics here from Moffat and um, Colin Bond, effectively letting Bond through for the lead, and that was a very good manoeuvre. Bond will now lead, and the fans down here at Pitt Street are going to go wild with enthusiasm. And up go the arms as Colin Bond leads Alan Moffat and Alan Grice further back then on the outside to um, Peter Brock, then John Harvey, and then, of course, the Gagan uh, Jane Carr. Johnny Rutherford. A very disappointed John Rutherford, I would think. You can see the tire marks. You can see the moment he had. He's been all over the track by the look of it. Something has gone wrong. Whether it was another car or whether something uh, in trouble. He did call into the pits earlier. And it's the Bob Jane car. It may just be the oil filter. They've done that before. Yes. Pete Gagan's big brawny right fist out the window. They'll be having the filter ready. He did it twice yesterday. If that's all it is, it won't stop them very long. But they've got some pressurizing problem. Alan Moffat, the leader on lap 57 the Hardy Perodo 1000. I wonder what's going through Alan Moffat's mind at the moment as he leads the charge for the $100,000 Hardy Perodo race this year with uh, Colin Bond, his teammate, settled back in second place. His car into pit number two, right at the start there. You can see the tyres ready for a change. He went a little bit beyond where they expected. The taller figure of Alan Hamilton now looms into sight outside the door. Helps unbuckle Colin Bond. It's a bit hard to pick them when they wear identical helmets, as you can see. He's done a great job, Colin Bond, setting a good pace. The long spell, 80 laps of the wheel, under the sort of pressure that's been on him. John Fitzpatrick slowing up. I think we'll desperately be trying to get back to the pit area. He's laying a smoke screen across the top, and Fitzpatrick was in, well, similar circumstances last year, perhaps not as much smoke. I think almost blowing some back on the back tyres, and a little skatey coming around that corner. 
and I think a very, very frustrated uh, John Fitzpatrick and even more frustrated Bob Morris waiting in the pits. Dick Johnson and Vern Schupin, I'm getting my overseas drivers mixed up. Not from New Zealand, he's all the way from South Australia. Vern Schupin and uh, Dick Johnson from Queensland. Yeah, just look at this. Goodness gracious me, Katayama flipping the car side over side at the end of uh, Conrod Strait. So he's had a big problem, a very, very dramatic end to the race for uh, little Japanese driver Katayama. That looks uh, bad at home as we watch the replay very dramatically caught on our video disc. Can you imagine what would have happened if the sand trap hadn't been there? He would have uh, gone probably head first he's a very lucky man to be able to walk straight back to the pits he certainly is mike it's a most spectacular accident we've been uh, luckily fairly accident free well i think it's a very bad sign and uh, i'd say the chances of alan moffat winning this event now are almost negated because there's one there's no way that you can finish the event like that and two there's very little doubt that they could in fact change the tire there's car 20 we can see now more clearly it's the winston car and fairly successfully too. Uh, 13, 13 seconds. seconds. 13 seconds, the difference between uh, Alan Moffat and Colin Bond. Bond obviously closing with a very dramatic finish and it always seems to be this way with the Hardy Ferrato 1000. There is the race leader, Alan Moffat, leading down Conrod Strait. The next car that we should see will be uh, Colin Bond, hopefully. There's not a great deal between them. Moffat with Jackie X, his co-driver, has covered 159 laps, which means 160th. Bond, the same number of laps, he has Alan Hamilton alongside him. One lap down, Peter Jansen and Larry Perkins. So it's the two Fords up front and a group of surviving Tyrannus behind. They're very excited about this and just look at the reaction to the Fords up the top of the mountain with Colin Bond just sitting in, uh, not making any attempt to uh, manoeuvre. He's playing it strictly to instructions in this, the final half lap of the 1977 Hardy Ferrodo 1000 Classic from Mount Panorama with Alan Moffat virtually in a limping Falcon with a problem that uh, the team won't tell us about. And uh, Colin Bond driving to orders, just sitting in behind the boss, and that's the way he's going to run out this race. Well, Alan Moffat might be nursing home a crippled car, but it's going to be the leader of a crushing victory to Ford in what has been the most competitive, the fastest, and the most international race we've seen here at the Mount Panorama Circuit. This Colin Bond pulls alongside. I don't think it's a threat to victory. I think it's just to line up the cars. Down the straight they go. Car one, car two. An absolute demonstration of the crushing victory to Ford here and the Alan Moffat dealer team. Moffat in car one. Colin Bond in car. For well, the last time, they come down in that magnificent view from the seven helicopter, a scene we've never seen before. Side by side, Colin Bond, Marsley in front, but he'll ease up for the corner and let his team leader through, I would think. But he's in front at the moment. <laughs> he's going to have trouble breaking here to let Moffat through again. Now he does, and Moffat from the outside will sweep around and take the checkered flag first for victory in the 1977 Hardy Ferrodo 1000. The winning pair. Alan Moffat and Jackie X.